let's face it, there's always problems when it comes to security, specifically cyber security. So in this video, we are going to cover all of the necessary pieces to make sure that your data is secure and that you've got all of the cyber security measures in place to be able to successfully onboard a virtual assistant and delegate tasks to them. So in this video, we're going to go through the agency owner's guide to keeping your data secure when hiring a virtual assistant. Obviously, lots of great things happen when you have a VA, but you've got to make sure that you're staying compliant, making sure that you're keeping up with all of your E&O exposures and keeping your client data as secure as possible. So I'm gonna get right into it. So first of all, you need to be using secure platforms. So use accredited CRMs and agency management systems, things like that. Keep your data safe there. Don't just use a spreadsheet. Do everything you can to make sure there's encryption on everything you're doing. All right, so first steps is I recommend using a password manager. If you just Google password manager, you're gonna find tons of options. The one that I like is LastPass. There's lots of different ones. So last, L-A-S-T pass pass.com that's one option essentially you will log into your password manager you will store all of your passwords you'll have one master password that you use to get in but anytime somebody needs access to log into a site you'll type in their email and you'll hit securely share credentials it will send them a code to use but they don't actually have the password so you can remove their access anytime so that's one level of security then I recommend storing your files inside Google Drive or OneDrive. They've got a lot of additional cybersecurity, Microsoft and Google. We'll touch on it in a second, but they've got double authentication you can turn on. I would recommend that. But this allows you to control who has access to what files. So if there's company files that you need to share out, you can very easily go into that file and remove access anytime. It's a lot easier than just sharing a PDF because as soon as you do, it's gone and out. So a virtual private network is one that's really going to be a requirement. A lot of times if you have a virtual assistant logging in to carrier sites or into your network, they're not going to be able to because it's going to read that IP address. And if they're not either at your office or in the US, it's going to disallow that person. So a virtual private network is pretty inexpensive and is the way that you're going to have to do it. That also adds some additional cybersecurity as well. Encrypted messaging, you could potentially turn on encryptions with your emails. You can send text messages, et cetera, encrypted. This provides just one additional layer. And then two-factor authentication, like I mentioned a second ago. So anytime somebody logs in, they have a password and they may have a code that they need to enter into their phone in order to log in to whatever software it is. All right, so controlling access is really important. You need to decide who needs access to what things. So your virtual assistant, do they need to get into your agency management system? Maybe, maybe not, depending on what they're doing. Do they need access to your CRM? Probably. But do they need to have admin access or can they just have a CSR access? I wouldn't give anybody login access to the principal account inside of any carrier. So just consider those things before you start sharing passwords. So the principle of least privilege, determine exactly who needs access to what and only give them as much as they need in order to do their job. Define the client roles and inside of that document, determine exactly what in charge of and that helps you determine what they need access to there's lots of monitoring tools you can use so if you work with my company at c4 solutions slash agency aid that's something we do so we have a screen monitor that is going at all times with any virtual assistant that's working with us so we can see what they're looking at what they're clicking on how long they're on different screens if their mouse is not moving for an extended period of time, we are monitoring all these things to make sure that everything's secure. Regular access reviews. So consistently use those user role documents and go through an audit. Okay, do they still need access to all of these things? And you can remove those things, change passwords, et cetera. And then have an offboarding protocol. So whenever you remove somebody from your company, be it a virtual assistant or an employee, have a procedure that you go through to make sure that you are systematically removing access to anything that they had access to and thus de-risking everything in the future. The last thing you need is a disgruntled employee that really wants to cause issues to your company and they go in and just jack everything up. And now you've got a massive cyber claim. All right, so confidentiality agreements, I think are important. So a non-disclosure agreement, I have all of my employees sign one. Basically it just 
says, hey, they're not going to disclose any pertinent customer information. They're not going to disclose any of our proprietary information in the company. It's just one additional legal safeguard that you can add in. You probably have heard that non-competes are no longer allowed, so you can sign one, but it's not enforceable. It doesn't help you any, but an NDA is still important. Like I mentioned, non-competes doesn't help anymore. Data handling policy. So basically, you need to have a contract that determines exactly how data is to be handled in side of your company. And so essentially, if somebody is doing things that are outside of your protocol, it's a fireable offense. They're going to understand it. But just having this protocol in place lets them know that you're serious. And it may also be a requirement for your cyber security software or your cyber insurance. And then cyber security policy, like I said, cyber insurance is incredibly important. And it's one of those things that an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure and every little bit helps because these claims do get really massive. Okay, and then as you can see here, I had removed the non-competes on this slide, but legal counsel input is also important. So consulting with an attorney, seeing, hey, what are my exposures? Where do we have issues and what can you help us to mitigate? And so kind of like if you're working with a contractor and they've got a hold harmless agreement or they are transferring risk to someone else, very similar. You need to find ways to remove as much risk from your company as you can. All right, so regular cybersecurity training is important inside of your company. So phishing awareness. So phishing email is essentially somebody sends you an email, may look real. You click a link, they're going to have Trojan Horse, some type of malware in there that's going to download a virus on your computer, or they could potentially be posing as one of your customers and could be trying to get banking information, whatever it may be. You just need to do consistent training with your team to make sure they expect this and know what's going on. Password best practices, I would recommend teaching your employees not to use the same password, not to do the same thing over and over again, and to have unique passwords for as many sites as they can. So again, safe software practices. I recommend having a secure connection whenever you're logging into things. Be careful not to use like public networks or public Wi-Fi if you're accessing your AMS. Just the same thing you would think about if you were logging into your bank. Incident response plans in the event that there's some type of data breach, you need to have a plan on how you notify clients, how you get that data back, how you get back up and running as quickly as possible. And then ongoing updates, consistently update passwords, update your cybersecurity, continue improving. It's not just to set it and forget it. It is a long-term plan. So monitor and review what you've got going on. So access logs, see who is using what sites, and this could potentially show you who you can remove access for. Do security audits, so make sure that you've got somebody, a third party site is ideal, that's going through checking how secure all of your software and system are so that you can find any exposures before a breach happens. Collaboration tools with version history. So this allows you to see anytime changes are made and you can see who made those changes and potentially who added in a virus. VA training. So you need to train your virtual assistants just like you would any employee on how to securely handle data, as well as you need to train your team members on here is a virtual assistant. They are remote. Here's what we're going to give them access to and then work with, ideally work with a company like mine. It doesn't necessarily have to be us, but make sure that you've got training in place for that virtual assistant. And then client communication, identify who communicates with clients, what channels and mediums they use. Is it email? Is it phone call? etc. Do we have to have a confirmation in writing before we make a change? That's one that I personally have. So before we cancel a policy, we have to get a text or an email. It has to be in writing. And again, this is just an E and E and O like CYA type deal. Just making sure we don't have issues there. Secure passwords, kind of like I mentioned, don't have the same password for everything and don't share it just via plain text. If you're going to send somebody a password, encrypt the email before you send it and then try to regularly update passwords. A lot of sites now make you update it every six months and I would recommend following something like that. And then limit who has access to what passwords. If they do have access to a password, make sure it's not shared on any other software. All right. So again, thank you 
for watching today. That's some basics. If you have any questions, my team would love to be able to chat with you. You can email us hello at agencyaid.com. You can go to agencyaid.com with or without the dash in the middle. Both will take you to our site. Uh, but if you have any questions, reach out to my team. And we'd love the chance to help you. In our next video, we are going to learn about the powerful art of delegating to your virtual assistants. Don't forget to subscribe and follow along.